one of those interesting questions that uh, people ask monks. Why do married couples cheat? <laughs> Is it because of temptation? Okay, some of you guys tell me why. <laughs> Actually, even though I'm a celibate monk, I understand quite a bit about lust and greed and temptation. Because uh, precisely because you don't act on it, you're not allowed to act on it, you learn quite a bit about it. Human beings have this terrible capacity to be bored. And uh, I think that the way, the reason the Buddha recommended keeping the five precepts is that you're actually supposed to get a bit bored, and then you're supposed to do it a bit less, and then you're supposed to use the energy that you, you were using in other activities, uh, you're supposed to bring that to your meditation. That's what I suspect is the case. <laughs> um, because moderation in sensuality uh, is uh, support to getting the deeper happiness that comes from meditation, the deeper peace. And I think that marriage needs to become friendship, a committed friendship, and hopefully Buddhist married couples support each other's practice and deepening of practice. And when, when we come to the you know, those times when there is someone who seems more attractive and the fantasy is very convincing and you really want that pleasure. You just have to contemplate the amount of pleasure compared to the amount of suffering that comes with the, with the experiment. And if you don't get caught, you still have to put up with the anxiety or not liking yourself, uh, feeling worried that you will get caught and feeling that you've done something not truthful. So I think, you know, it's like if we eat baked beans on toast every day, you know, at some point you're going to want some Nutella. <laughs> Something like that. But uh, that's, just, that's just life, isn't it? Relationships, I've been talking to a couple of people lately about relationships, they take work. You have to be committed to making them work. And uh, sometimes there's romance, sometimes there isn't. Supportive and sometimes they aren't. But I look at my parents now, and they used to fight a lot when I was younger, so much so that I used to wish that they'd get a divorce, actually. And uh, now, they're really good friends to each other, so my father's memory isn't as good as my mum's, but my mum can't drive, so my father drives to the shopping centre, and they go for walks on the beach every day. But my mum remembers the doctor's appointment and which pill to take at breakfast and which pill to take at lunch. And basically they really help each other <laughs> and they're, they're really good friends to each other now. So it's interesting, just in having that long-term commitment, uh, in the end they really came to depend on each other and really help each other. So I think that's marriage and relationship ideally I think is about that. That's what it matures into, a lifelong commitment, a lifelong friendship and helping each other because either of them, if they didn't have, because the kids have to work, if they didn't have each other, life would be more difficult, so. Yeah, but uh, Karma Raga, the Buddha said if there was not one more kilesa as powerful as sexual lust, it would be impossible to become enlightened. He said, but because there's just one that's that strong, <laughs> you can take it out. But it takes, a, it's a pretty serious, uh, statement. So we're up against something pretty serious and um, use your reflective capacity. What are the benefits of not doing it? Sometimes we measure our happiness uh, or we mismeasure our happiness because we think about the pleasure that we don't have that we want and we often forget to notice the suffering that we don't have that we might have if we have the pleasure that we want. So uh, it's good to think about these things <laughs> before you get in trouble.